and fewer ways to try and take down Samsung White just because White didn't have to show vulnerabilities in the group stage. But if I look at the way that White puts their team together, Dandy makes plays because his solo lanes play defensively, keep the lanes in the right spot, assist with wards, and go in. The only lane that plays aggressive for Samsung White is their bottom lane, and they ward the crap out of it to try and avoid ganks. Right. So if I'm TSM right here, you pick a defensive top laner like Ryze for Dyrus to try and just outscale Looper. You actually pick a defensive bottom lane because White is going to be super aggressive and they're hard to gank anyway. Okay. You pick someone in the mid lane like Syndra who can go incredibly aggressive and you attack Dandy in the jungle. If somehow TSM can take out Dandy, I think they have a chance. And that would require getting something like a Lee Sin as your first pick. It is going to be open unless yep. Samson White bans it here. Question is, do you take the Rise, the scaling top right. laner you were just talking about, or do you get Lee Sin, the best nope. early game jungler? Well, they you definitely don't. don't get Lee Sin. So now. now you can get your Rise at least. Right, and that's one of the problems oh. here. Or not. White has a chance to block that strategy. However, as far as scaling top laners go, they actually bypass Rise and go for Maokai, who is still a late game scaling champion and yes. can create fights. He is a late game scaling champion, but he's ch he's a champion who's very strong because he's so good at assisting his team and being a tank in the team fights. You need damage dealers behind you, which means the rest of your team cannot fall behind. Otherwise, Maokai in the late game is just going to be tanking some damage, but he's never ever going to kill anyone himself, and the team is still going to lose the fights. Ryze would have been able to do more on his own. And that's where Dyrus kind of shines, being back up for the team, giving them the assistance. You can do that with the Maokai ultimate. Shut down fighting like Samsung White likes to do. But Dandy getting his 3-0 Kha'Zix out of the group stage in his hands. And amazing. On to Jarvan, which was not that spectacular. It has not been super impressive in the past, but that is definitely his third jungler right. that he's going to be picking up. And all okay, right, there's, there's one more thing that TSM might have to do if they want to try and take out a win. Something that White did last game is they picked very versatile champions that work in many different situations. Yeah. Much like the Thresh and Elise can play at any point in the battlefield. If TSM picks a more... Wow. With the Fizz, that's crazy. If TSM, I'll finish this real quick, picks a one-dimensional team composition that does one thing very well, like go in with Jarvan and Maokai, and they put the entire team towards that, they might have enough strength to overtake the versatility of White at a certain point in the game. This becomes tough. Every ultimate Bjergsen really wants to put out here with either Syndra or Zed can be canceled out by Pawn with his Fizz pick. So he's saying, please pick your mains right now. Very tough choice. Yeah, and this Fizz pick here, it's actually an old school pick for Pawn in the mid lane. Right. Before he joined Samsung White or Samsung Blue, he was actually known as a Fizz guard in Korea. So it's an old school pick. We saw it once in group stage where he was dominating as well. And Zed being locked in for Bjergsen, this matchup one on one. Zed will Whoa. have the advantage of the oh game. My God. Sin. Zed can win early game, Luke but he will get outskilled. And that's Sin from Looper. We're going back one year back here, season three worlds. Did we just Luba hit a time Zed. warp? Yeah, we definitely hit a time warp right there. Wow. Looper with teleport pressure on Singe. That is something that Maokai does not have a chance of doing enough damage to, uh. to try and get him out of lane. And obviously, when he joined the team, Season 3 Worlds was his very first tournament for Samson White. His very first game. His very first game. He played Zinged, Ghost, Teleport, when people didn't play Teleport top lane, and he destroyed people. I think this yeah. might be Looper being a little vocal here. We know him as the quiet guy, but he's saying, gentlemen, I want to bring the Singe back up. I wonder if it's also a style pick. I know style Looper didn't join the scene until Season 3, but Dyrus was a Singe player oh, yeah. in Season 1. Or sit there, bind yeah. laugh, and just run around oh. spamming it <laughs> all the time. All the time, indeed. So another amazing set of picks. I said we probably wouldn't be too flabbergasted by these ones, but once again, knocked onto our butts. We're already sitting on them, though. The players are loading onto the rift, so keep sharing your predictions by tweeting at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag TSMWIN or SSWWIN. We're about to rock out game two here. A best of five. Korean teams practice regularly in this, so TSM yeah. needs the mental fortitude, the physical fortitude now to press on here in game two. See what they can do from blue side. We're on the rift. Yeah, and Samson White here, their comp is going to be fairly weak in the early game. Once again, laning phase heavily in favor of TSM, especially in mid and bottom lane. They can get a lead here and try and punish him in the mid game before Sage becomes strong. One thing, that. one thing I never thought I'd hear is a TSM chant in Korea. TSM fans are everywhere. Anything can happen. 
especially in sports. That's one thing that I have to keep telling everyone every time I see this matchup. Obviously, no one is predicting TSM to win. However, upsets always have a chance of happening. Based on the first game, though, with a 26-minute loss to a late-game comp, it may not be tonight, but the possibility is there. Yeah, and I mean, the first game, there were options for Team Solo Mid, but they played it very passive. Reginald just said they were nervous. Now they need to shine. They have a very strong early to mid game comp with the corky pick in this bottom lane. That's where they need to put the pressure. They need to be able to get a lead early and not let Samson White go to late game with Fist and Singed. This is actually somewhat of a similar situation that we saw last game though, where TSM picks a very aggressive early game bottom lane. They have to make that count a yeah. little bit more than they did last time. And you see them do the same trick as they did in the last game. You instantly go bottom lane because you know you are the strongest in a 2v2. So if they want to lane swap, if the other team wants to lane swap, let them go top lane, lose the dragon advantage. TSM want to be on this bottom side. They're invading on this move. They're not making the same mistake as last time. And they missed yeah. the ward, so they sold him. That is a great ward by Samsung White. They have the chance to counterplay this one. However, Minions have spawned, and TSM has the numbers advantage right here, so they could stay Why around a while away? and yeah. go. Well, here's the thing. They have backed away. They just haven't shown that they've backed away yet, and they end up defending, despite being outnumbered. Yeah, so another the basic didn't actually start it, so just going to standard start now after a small invade here by TSM. Now they're back. We get, we get the 2v2 lane. This has to be heavily in favor of TSM in this bottom lane. Crowd is and he's between towers. Yeah, so they're cheering for Singe because yep. the was already between the turret. And here's the thing, they know exactly where Amazing was. So as far as level one in between the turret farming right here, easy pickings for Looper. Yeah, once he gets a ward as well, he can actually ward this blue buff. He's gonna and mess Amazing Danny up can in run. the jungle. Then he can run from this red buff straight over to blue. And if Amazing he doesn't expect it, he might be surprised, but he did see him at the waves here. So he knows the blue buff is probably gone. Wow. It is incredible to me how Samsung White has been able to play pedal to the metal in these early games. They're taking this some might amazing early game risks at this point. I don't know nope, how much it could backfire on that they one. Are going, they're probably going to three buff TSM. They just two did. Two games in a row. They just did. The fact they stopped the blue buff, or they actually TSM didn't start the blue buff on the bottom side of the map, and then Amazing here, walking up to his red buff. No reaction from Dyrus in time. Here's, Samsung White gets the blue buff. Here's the impressive thing to me. Samsung White not only knows their strengths, but they know where they can be attacked. I think the one thing that happens if Samsung White is to lose is that somehow Dandy falls a little bit behind of Amazing. Therefore, their early game strategies have been ridiculously well crafted to see TSM strategies, and going for the three buffs is massively effective. This is a good move. Amazing though shouldn't start the buff. He should just go in there, because look at the bottom side of the map. Wild Turtle is destroying him on this Twitch here, so they have the pressure in the bottom lane. They have TSM has to secure this buff. You have to send up the Corky. You have to send him up. But there's no teleport, though, from Dyrus. There's teleport from Looper. He used it to go to lane. This is easily counterable. There it is. Coming in from Looper. This is going to be very big for the team. A nice pop up there coming in. The bubble goes back for the up. Blast it. More than one on that one. Amazing gets himself caught out. It is first blood to Mata, however. The 1v1 in mid lane. The hop over. Oh, the trickster back down as the flash hits. Does Bjergsen have the damage? He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, no! no! The Grievous wound is on. And he shoves the trident right through Bjergsen. Another amazing start right there for Samsung White. Not only do they secure Dandy's advantage over Amazing, they also get a 1v1 kill during the collapse at the blue buff, and Pawn starts 1-0. And this Z-Pig is supposed to win the early game against the Fist because he's going to get outscaled. Late game, he cannot kill Fist in any way. And he no. just died one on one due to this invade here. Teleport from Looper coming down. It does mean Dyrus in the top lane will be able to get some extra form. But two kills for Samson White. For a team in TSM shoes to be coming in knowing that the team they had the most trouble against in all practice and the most feared team was a team they were playing against. To fall behind in the early game like they have in games one and two has to be devastating. Yeah, especially knowing going into the game that you are not the favorites. I talked to Bjergsen yesterday. He told me my mindset going into the game is not that we're going to lose, but it's not that we're going to win either. I'm just going to go in and try and do my best. Sometimes not setting those expectations leaves you 
do what you want without too much of a heavy mind worrying about all those things that could go wrong. Right now, Bjergsen has done okay in that mid lane matchup. They came out of the lane quite even. Bond's been finding his kills around the map. Did last time on Jace. Bjergsen again on Zed this game. We'll see if he fares differently in the bottom lane. Not catching up so much. Corky, on, or Wild Turtle on Corky, still having a great time. And Lustboy, he's got to remember playing against Mata previously from Blaze. Those oh, situations yeah. did not go well for him. Many, many times. Even looking back at the very first time Samson White actually bursted onto the scene. They won the OGN Champion Spring in 2013 against CJ Blaze in the final. Yeah. Samson Ozone at that time, our MVP Ozone. They were the underdogs, but they destroyed them. 3-0, yeah. Mata look great, always 2v2 laning Lost Boy and always winning. Strong play from them this time, feeling a bit better. Lost Boy on that Nami, doing what he can. Wild Turtle taking charge of the lane a little bit more. Lost Boy likes to be aggressive, and now Wild Turtle's on that train this game as well. Yeah. We're coming up on seven minutes in. The lanes are looking pretty good, except for that early game, triple buff. And it's honestly just Samsung White trying to secure their edges. One thing that they've actually done in both of these games is they have somewhat sacrificed their bottom lane. Imp, even though he got the swap at the start of game one, swapped down kind of before he was ready to have an advantage. And in this one, they just threw him in there against the Corky lane. But it's because of this. It's so dandy, can get ahead of Amazing and control the rest of the map, because that's what's important here. Yeah, and also because the Twitch pick for Samson White, they just need him to have a play to the run king so he can make picks. Let's see mid lane. Shove the waters, jumping down on Bjergsen. One last hit from Dandy. He stays, and it's going to be now amazing. Who takes the aggro? Do they want it? Another minion oh, no. wave coming in. The teleport's going to happen from Dyrus, but that is going to have to be canceled. He actually takes it all the way. Looper now gets top lane to himself. White was in the perfect place when they secured that kill, not taking fire from either mid lane turret. You rarely see turret yeah. dives in that Amazing spot, position. and them not to take turret hits. Plus, they burn the teleport from Dyrus, which will give Looper a teleport advantage once again. Another huge win for Samsung White. And we had level six as well for the fist pick in mid lane because of the one-on-one -on -one earlier, where he managed to get out ahead, got the experience as well. Instantly, as we saw level six, you dive. Dandy was already in position, pre-planning his move in the jungle, knowing he was stronger than Amazing as well, because there's XP advantage for everyone on Samson White at the moment, except for the bottom lane. Well, Imp knows he's not gonna be getting in too many of these fights. Keeps himself farming in the bot lane. We saw a little bit of roam from Mata just previously, which made Dandy so safe to be in that jungle and try to take down Amazing and everything. Just played off of that. Backing right in vision. Another time that Wild Turtle actually does not get to fully back due to Imp's aggression in that lane. And now if, if Bjergsen can manage to actually get back in this lane, he might be able to make some plays on the map, but Dandy is going to be in his jungle for the remaining of this game here. So TSM, they need to invest heavily into defensive wards on the bottom side of the map. You have the scaling top lane. Let Dyrus be one-on-one. -on -one. Invest all your wards on the bottom side and try and keep Turtle ahead and make sure Bjergsen can, Bjergsen can get back in this matchup. Right. To, to TSM's credit, though, warding hasn't necessarily been a problem. It's been the use right. of said wards. Looking at the ward stats from game one, they purchased the exact same number of green and pink wards as white. However, you can't ward a turret dive like this. Oh, this time, though, he jukes, and maybe they get popped. Death Mark's gonna hit. They got a good amount of damage down. The exhaust hits on. There's Amazing over the wall. He's completely out of mana in that engagement, so he's gonna go down. Getting a little too ahead of themselves on this one. Samsung White gaining more ground. Every single time TSM thinks they have an advantage, it's not there. And White is just destroying them and most likely demoralizing TSM. And that was a bottom lane. Nine minutes into the game, both turrets are still up. Leaving the lane, go back to base, and instead of running down towards their own bottom side, knowing Wild Turtle could zone them away anyway, waiting for the minions to hit the tower, they walk down mid, mid lane. Be ready to start a fight, be ready to join in in case White wants to dive. That's again why they can make these aggressive plays, because they know backup is coming every single time. We see also every single, almost every single time, Looper, Pawn, they'll be down in CS, but they're making plays around the map. The CS, the Dyrus, and Bjergsen having those lanes, definitely not going to bring it up. And Pawn's even been able to have free time now, so he's ahead. Yeah, we're talking about 
best of five experience. Yeah. Obviously, they mentioned a little bit on the analyst test. TSM did get some good best of five experience in the most recent North American playoffs. They played 14 out of a possible 15 games and ended up winning the NA championship. However, Samsung White has been playing best of fives since the beginning of 2013 as a team as either three out of five or four out of five is the people we see right here, and they are good at it. They win the majority of them, and we're seeing it here. The adjustments they've made from game one to two, normally you see the team that loses make the better adjustments. It's actually the team that won this time, and they are not letting up. The team calling this one, putting the chess pieces in place well before they need to be. A great bubble coming out of Lust Boy, regularly seen there, but is it enough to save the game? Dandy trying to dip and dodge, but he Lust goes down. Nine. The kill coming in from Wild Turtle as he gets hit up as well. And now White could be in a bit of a pickle. That's going to be a 3v1, though. Amazing gets one. Lust Boy still with Looper. He throws down the slow. He's going to get the jump out. Actually, he may just give it to somebody on this one. Pawn would be the best one. He'll dive in. No, the poison will lock down Lust Boy. Yeah. Three for two. Teleport for Dyrus just came up right now. And look at the jungle here of TSM. They have zero defensive wards, so they couldn't even see the roam coming down from mid lane. Suddenly, five members from Samson White sitting in his bot lane. No time to react for TSM. They just have to give it up or give the kills up. Yeah, well, one of the biggest things is Bjergsen's nowhere near the strength of Pawn, so he actually can't roam on Zed. Dyrus, when he tries to farm in between turrets, gets collapsed on because White has all the control. Pulling Bjergsen into this one. He may not want to go all the way. They know Looper's going to be on the backside. Double bust for him as well. The flash going to be forced here. But Dandy can just jump over the wall. Bjergsen can only provide so much help here. They the have minion a minion there. giving full vision of where Bjergsen was. They knew this fight was going to happen. Here comes him to help clean it up. Throwing down the spray and plates. Actually still down. And looks like Amazing gets himself stuck up inside the Baron's den not going well for Team Solo mid. And a lot of people will point to this and say, look, Amazing's one in five. He's having a horrible game. No, 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 no. Samsung White is doing an amazing yes. job of shutting him down. From minute one, the way they invaded, the way Looper went in between the tourists to harass the blue buff, the synchronicity they've had with the rest of the team, Dandy being everywhere. Amazing doesn't have anywhere to go. He has been the sole focus of this White strategy, and it's working perfectly. It's because White isn't happy with just that small advantage. Like we said, they don't play with their food. They go back for seconds, thirds, and they make sure another advantage comes out of the first advantage. Yeah, well, they've had five courses of Amazing so far. <laughs> oh, let's see if they want a piece of Wild Turtle and Lost Boy in this bottom lane. Could be. Turret's down. Nobody's That's coming vision behind. on it. Bjergsen's already late on the roam. Looper's already here. He's set up Pent now in the bottom lane. Puts Wild Turtle back in the fight. No shell's going to save him. Amazing again. Trying to go deep as possible to get in. A great jump the waters to kind of just lock down the fight and spread it out for Dandy. He Whoa. makes it out alive and actually draws attention of three TSM members, which means Pawn and Looper run free. And it's the same again, though. <laughs> Samson White is the team to always make the play, the team to always yep. be there, multiple members before any other team can react in time. It's not just Team Solo Mid right here. We have seen this many, many times in the past. Yeah. They make the plays. They sacrifice farm, they sacrifice their tower just to roam around the map, constantly look for fights. And if you don't have all these defensive wards to spot them, they will suddenly be there before you can even react. Right, because TSM is in a perpetual state of catching up. Samsung White is so right. good at taking the initiative when they're going to try and make plays. Turret dives, jungle invades, dragon forces, they're always the ones yeah. doing things first. That way, when TSM tries to react, White sees it coming, and they're able to plan accordingly. This game is completely out of hand. And I've never in an NA or ULTS game yeah. seen a bottom lane say, okay, we don't actually care about this lane. We're going to recall and start roaming around nine minutes into the game. Mata and Imp has been everywhere on the map. They've been part of so many kills already. I mean, look, three kills for Mata and four assists. That guy is everywhere. You get playmaking out of everybody on Samsung White, and that's one of the hardest things to keep control of. It's definitely multitasking right now for Team Solomid, and they're trying to do what they can to even piece together some core items in the bottom lane. Kind of staving it off now. TSM knows what it's like to sit back at the base, so maybe they'll be able to defend this time. They don't have the best wave clear, but they can definitely put up some walls of defense once they get to the base. 15 minutes in, a much bigger gold lead already for Samsung White in this one, and two turrets in their favor. Now denying TSM turrets this game. And setting up for this dragon here, but this series and this world championship for Samsung White, it means a lot. 
right? Because they have constantly kind of been like the second best or third best team in the region. They've only won OGN once. That's going all the way back to season and three. And with Dade, they have not. It was with Dade as well, right. yeah. Yes, with this and home, on. home in top lane, yeah. no looper here. And then the entire season here, they've always been facing Samsung Blue or SK Telecom TK, T1K, losing in the semifinal, never managed to win OGN, or at least here in season four. Going in and actually winning the world championship would finally prove they are the best team in the world. So this means a lot for them. And you can also kind of see in this team with the way they play together, the type of cohesion they've built up. It's not like these are the new guys onto the scene. They've been consistently near the top for so long, and they're definitely looking for some type of fight here. TSM. Yeah, they're trying to see just four people, but they can't deal with Looper. They're just in a lot of trouble. Can't deal with Looper indeed. Already getting his distortion boots so he can keep that teleport that got him on the map going and keep the plays coming from his side, whichever side he decides to be on. Yeah, and they're just so stuffed from gold at the right. moment. You can't even buy all the wards you need to have to be able to defend from all these aggressive plays from Samson White, who has all the gold in the world. I know, and to continue on your point from earlier, with how it's really important for White to do this. Mm. We look at a team like Cloud9, who we see as the pinnacle of North American consistency. They've been the same five guys in the LCS since the spring of 2013. With only a few changes, that's kind of Samsung White's story as well. They were known as Samsung Ozone, but as far as having a long period of consistent success, mind you, it wasn't first place in their region except for that one time. Yep. It was an incredible high level of play. When you do that for so long, the World Championship just becomes so much more important because they've had success in general yeah. in Korea for so long, and now to win the world would mean everything. And because, obviously, going back to World Championship last year, they were expected yep. to do well. Disappointing performance. Want to go in and show this is never going to happen again. That's why we saw in the group stages as well. There was no games where Samson White didn't just completely roll over the enemy team. They took it 100% serious from the start and wanted to show we are here to win. Yeah, and we just kind of continue on the trends here. White hasn't lost a game. They were the only team here at Worlds to still be undefeated. And they're looking like they're making it to the semifinals. Anything can happen in these long series. This game's a little bit out of hand. Imp going into the kill. That itself being intimidating enough. He gets on the opposite side of Wild Turtles, so the Valkyrie's still in range for autos. Big bang, boom. Imp comes up with another one. It gets an assist for yeah. Dandy and Mata as well. And it just, it's so important for Imp as well that he can keep picking up these kills on Twitch. He can keep playing it. Luba wants a piece of loss. They are not afraid to keep going. They start to close the clamp down. Even Pawn from the backside here. Amazing, and Bjergsen trying to stay safe, but I don't know how much safety they're gonna have under that turret in just a few seconds. Dyrus with the team as well, and right past everything, Looper says, I almost got him. He doesn't care Blowing about anything right now. now. With his ultimate running, Rod of Ages, Ninja Tabi, and a Giant's Belt, he is just full cinched right now, going anywhere he wants, and TSM has no answers. The participation from everybody right now, three to two kills across the board with assists in the pocket as well. White has been doing this as a team. It's like the laning phase is just the prep, the appetizer for them to really dive into the entire game. And at this point, as a team, when you're this far behind in the best out of five, what you do is basically you ignore the game you're currently playing and you start discussion, uh, discussing, okay, next game, what are we gonna do? What went wrong in this game? What can we change? What's our pick and ban phase going to be? And you don't even care about dying anymore in this game. You just keep focusing on the next game. Yeah. And honestly, TSM doesn't have to look very far into the game to see what went wrong. Right. It's the very start of the game. They have not been able to get a red buff and a blue buff for Amazing at the start in either of these games. And they are immediately having to play from behind. That's step one. Yep. They need to get there. And again, it's passive play from TSM. Let's just see what happens here. Imp is spotted by Pink Ward. So they want to hit Amazing a few times. But once again, it's also Team Solomit being passive. At the level one, you saw Samson White give up the blue buff, saying, OK, you have five members right here. Luba is already in top lane. We're going to give you this blue buff here and just try and trade buffs. Because they actually walked away from it. Yeah. And TSM just said, well, we're going to walk away as well. Because we don't actually we, we don't want to try and take the chance of starting it. Go back to your own red buff, and suddenly you lose three buffs. And 
a play like that honestly speaks a little bit towards uh, a bit of a mental block. And you can't really blame TSM having been destroyed by Samsung White in these two games. But at the start of the game, they're honestly giving a little bit too much respect. Yeah. yeah. No matter how good you are, your champion only has one skill at level one, right? If you have more people and you can see them, you're generally going to be all right. And TSM needs to have confidence in that. At this point, though, even if they see Twitch, it's not okay. Oh, a lined up red attack hat. The fearless play once again of White if they have a little bit of a lead. Going after Team Solo mid right on the doorstep of their own base. 35 seconds on Dragon after this. But they're looking to get some more out of it. And they push them off the inhibitor turret. An inhibitor going down just over 21 minutes in this. Actually, looks like they may just back off for this one. Go for the Dragon. No, they're going to stay. No worries on this. Even with Wild Turtle coming out, still four members there. Dyrus is out tough, yep. pushing the lane. Not really going to knock down that turret too fast as they start losing their base. Again, they're obviously so far ahead. They're just controlling the game, doing what they want. But for Team Solo Mid, it's still all about the next game now. Yep. What do we want to do? What is our pick and ban phase going to be? Was Maokai the right first pick for us? Was, are we playing too passive? Are we too nervous? Next game, they can go in and just forget all about making right. mistakes and just try and play the best they can do and be aggressive, make some plays, surprise Samson White. This replay in particular, uh, not really too much TSM could have done. No. Because Imp is an absolute monster right now when he is comfortable on Twitch. Plus, even if they did jump on, Mata had his monsoon up for Janna. They are still trying to give this one their all and expect a little bit of aggression from GSM here, even if it's walking in for a trap. You can't blame them trying to get a bit of a positive play before the end of this game to build a little bit of confidence. And also just run as a team now. You've been split up for the first part of the game. You've been dying. Tell them what behind the Looper. That All the, the wards they placed previously, Looper uses as a gateway to get behind Team Solo mid, and they start to tear them apart from the inside out on this one. Wild Turtle doing what he can to orb walk this one out. Almost get enough damage, he does. They are able to lock down Pawn on this one, but they lost three at what cost to keep the fight going here? And it's the cost of four members so far. The look for Lust Boy, he throws down the wave, but Dandy's brought his surfboard, and he's gonna continue on this one. 13 to nine, it shouldn't take too long. Gets bubbled up for a second, but this one's going to be a long run. Well, he has no mana left, so it's a long run. They They're going for the kills, though, that's for sure. Uses his last bit of mana on the jump. I suppose he's going to make him work for this one. At least they're making, they're, they're saving uh, their objectives here. Turrets aren't going down. It's not like they have the waves to push, but Samsung White should Everyone not on have this oh, exact oh, roll. Yeah. Got to give up oh, sometime. So far. Fish out of water. 8-2-8 eight, and eight is the scoreline of Dandy after that one. But it's honestly been him and Mata, like usual, setting up the plays. They both have identical kill participations in this one. Obviously, this fight was TSM being caught between a singe and a hard place because everything on Samsung White was willing to chase them down. Specifically, watch the way Dandy uses his resets in this fight. He always jumps right before he sees a kill is about to happen, so he'll have it back for the chase. So good. Triple kill there coming in for Dandy, making it work on the Kha'Zix. He's going full damage this game. No double sight stone coming in for Samsung White this time. A lot of control and Mata being able to get around to place down these wards. Moby Boots coming out early. Focus to Dyrus here in the top lane. He didn't realize there was more to be had on this one. Storm Shield onto Imp for a bit more damage and safety. It's not going to be enough. They just get the flash. And just looking at the pick and ban phase here, which we have seen right. so far. Mm -hmm. I get their idea from TSM, and I actually like it with picking these mid-game AD carries and try and get the lead early on, because right. Wild Turtle won his lane. The problem is, everyone else is losing, in this game at least. In the last game, Wild Turtle actually got the tower and bottom lane as well after they swapped back 2v2, but they had the same problem. Mid lane fell behind, top lane was a big problem, and of course the jungle matchup has been very, very uh, heavily yeah. in favor of Dandy so far. Right. TSM caught out once again. This game is not going to last much longer. They do get a kill, though. Get a pop down on him. That's big damage in the beginning. Mata's forced out of this one as well after using everything on himself. This is a kid for Wild Turtle, but he flashes into the fight. He does get the auto attack down necessary. It's a bit of a shutdown, so gold there. But I don't know if that gold right now is going to help. Dyrus doing what he can between Looper and Pawn. That's going to be a quick kill coming up for Pawn as well. Another four down. Lust Boy makes it out this time. Not a bad fight for TSM. You're down 15,000 gold and you get a trade three for four. Yeah. You can take that into the next game saying, all right, we can actually 
kill some of these guys every once in a while. They're still not coming back in this game because they've given up so much already, but that was a good fight for TSM. Samsung White now able to build a surplus in their items. We see Dandy with the Quicksilver Sash coming out so he can keep just wreaking havoc in these fights. Looper gonna be going back in the top lanes for they can so they can reset, get back to this one. They are just warding everything out. So whatever TSM does, it's going to be known. Let's take a look at this again. So let's see what happens here. If actually gets engaged on, he's out of mana and in a very bad situation or a very bad position. So they could just kill him instantly, and that's a lot of the damage. Then Fish joins in, and while while Turtle is actually getting a kill here on Mata in the end, of making it a fairly close team fight. Looper. And a very, very fed Fizz at this point can just clean it up. Yeah, Fizz will be a hyper carry here. They're just baiting around Baron. It's crazy to think they haven't even needed to do that to create an edge yet. It feels like Samson White at the moment don't really want to finish the game because they want to keep getting kills. And just like, I'm not sure if they want to hit the mental aspect here of TSM and just saying, we can keep it's killing true. you, keep killing you, keep killing you. It's a good still game too. Yeah, it's, it's almost like they're, they're the chasing enemy. kills, they're chasing kills. Surrender. and. Basically trying to just hammer them down as hard as possible. The waiting game only works if you're waiting in the right spot. And Baron right oh. now is being taken by Samsung White. This They're is gonna, gonna be able to get this and just fly right through. They're gonna get two kills from this one. Calling it already. <laughs> Imp is gonna I walk mean, in here and he's gonna die. We were joking about it earlier, actually. Every time there's a team really, really far behind, Official always said, what they should do here is they should have all five in a brush and hope to get a few kills. Come on, walk Wait. in the bush. All right. Uh, Damn it. They have two pink wards in this brush, surely. No, nope, they get spotted out uh, by the side ward. If they just would have waited a little bit longer, maybe White would have backed out. This is almost hard to do because your minions are fucked oh, up. There. They have to be in the they jungle, and they are. That's going to be Dandy going down. New resets coming in from the Kha'Zix. Fizz. Big kill for Pawn onto Bjergsen again. Wild Turtle goes down immediately as well. And Samsung's ability to, ability to just pick out what is right and wrong in these fights. <laughs> the chase kill again. all the damage dealers immediately every time. Ah, Mata trying to uh, hurricane the potential jump from Amazing. But Amazing wins out here in the mind games. He's like, yeah. I'm not going to do anything, man. I'm just going to run. Burned a Janna all for nothing. But uh, it only cost his life. At this point, 29 kills to 8, 27 minutes into the game. We'll see if White decides to end here. They do have minions, they're going for the next turn. Very dominating play, Lich Bane as well, on Pawn to help knock down these turrets even faster. Just a little bit later for this one. Game two as well from the purple side, going over to Samsung White. TSM spawning on their fountain, going for broke on this one, trying to push out White for one the last time here in game two. And White is taking the fight because they think they can get the kills. Back in goes Pawn. It falls quite early in this engage here. And it looks like they're able to push back a little bit. That's the Zion coming this in fight. from Pawn. Dyrus's Vengeful Maelstrom really cutting down a lot of the damage and mitigating exactly what was needed in that fight. Looper now to go Night down. Bubble. The Nexus saved at half health here. Dandy tries to jump in. Does he have the resets? It's going to be one kill coming in. That goes on to Amazing. Pawn a little too close. Takes a laser to the backside from the fountain. And it's such a back and forth. But somehow, White comes out on top. Dandy takes the last few swings. And he wins will drop TSM's Nexus. True to fashion, White gets a bunch of kills. 33 kills to 11, they had 22 more than TSM there. The game was decided much before then though, and White looks even better in game two than they did in game one. Increasingly definitive on their moves. The gold lead was a thousand in the first game for the first five or wow. for 15 to 20. Yeah. That was about four to five thousand that game when we reached that point. And the scariest thing about all this is we were talking about how White never had to reveal anything in the group stage. Right. And how TSM will need to adjust to what White brings at them. However, White is adjusting without being challenged. They have done two very different things.